Hello and welcome to tonight's event. My name's Jude and I'm a librarian for Kirkley's Libraries. Tonight's is event is part of a programme of events run in conjunction with the Living Knowledge Network, which was created by the British Library. And their current annual exhibition, which runs, well, it started this year, last year, 2020, and it runs to about the summer in 2021, is called Unfinished Business, A Fight for Women's Rights. If you'd like to know a little bit more about the Living Knowledge Network and the exhibition I'm talking about, you can go to this website and you'll be able to find out about lots of events and all sorts of really interesting things that have go, been going on from talks with Gloria Steinem to an interview with Dolly Parton, which was great fun. Kirkley's Library is a part of this UK wide partnership and it includes 20 public libraries and three national libraries. The national libraries it includes are the National Libraries of Scotland, the National Library of Wales and the British Library. And it was created to find new ways for libraries across the countries to work as one. Together we share ideas, we spark conversations and we create connections between libraries and our communities. There's some great stuff happening. So if you do get a chance, do check out the website because there's information and events from lots of public libraries around the countries too. I remember seeing the ones from Norfolk and there's some from Wakefield and many more besides. This is our third event that we've done as part of the program for the Living Knowledge Network events. And the first one that we did was hosted by our writer in residence, Christina Longdon. And it was called A Room of One's Own, I Wish. And she was discussing female authors and also strong female characters in books. And she did go on to discuss what it was like to be a working class woman who wanted to be a writer, aspired to be a writer and, and the obstacles that she overcame to become one, which she has very successfully done. And the second one event that we ran was a zine making workshop and that was with Cherry Styles. And Cherry Styles is from the Salford Zine Library in Manchester. And we co I was co hosted with our wonderful apprentice, Kirkley's Library's apprentice, Hannah. And we got to find out how to make a zine, what actually a zine is, and a zine's roles in the social change for women in both history and also currently. So you can catch that by Googling Kirkley's Libraries YouTube and just go to the YouTube channel. And if you click on videos, you'll see lots and lots of different videos that have been made by Kirkley's Libraries. So I would imagine you'll probably find some other things that you fancy watching as well. And tonight, I was wondering how to make the jump in the introduction to introduce the guests that we've got on. And I was having a good look at uh, Music in Kirkley's website, which I've just put the banner up there. And that has lots of information about all the amazing things that happen in Kirkley's music wise, from um, small live venues to larger concerts, to Opera North, contemporary music, popular music, organ music. And I stole the first sentence that I'm gonna use from that website, and it is, we thought as Kirklees is a district of world-class music that stands proud on its rich and diverse musical heritage, we wanted to celebrate women sound artists who make, perform and exhibit not just locally or nationally, but internationally as well. We have four women sound artists tonight. Now, I'm sure you're super ready to get on to the in-conversation bit of this event, but I've just got one more thing to say, and then, and then I'll be gone. Well, I'll still be on screen, but it won't be about me at all. Um, and that is that we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear any questions or comments. Just go to the chat box wherever you're watching this. It might be YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, um, and just type away, send some questions or comments across to us, and we'll answer them as we go along. So let me introduce our amazing, talented and very inspiring artists that we've got on tonight. I'll just start to bring everybody onto screen. So first of all, I'll introduce, I'll do it in alphabetical order. So I'll introduce Ryoko Arme, Akama. Hi, Ryoko. Hello. Andy Brown. Hi, Andy. 
Joe Kennedy and Eleanor Cully. So hi, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to tonight's event. It's really nice to see you all. I know it's a little bit different because I'd normally see you when we're in buildings and things like that. Um, so tonight, I think what we discussed and decided to do was have a little bit of time for each of you to talk about your practice and about being an artist, um, about music. And then we were going to take some question and answers and just have a general conversation together as well. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Good to go. I can't decide who I was given. I was given the wonderful job of saying who was going to go first. And you know what? I think what I'm going to suggest is that Joe goes first because Joe has got a film that I've already seen. And it'll be lovely to start off with Joe, a little bit of chat, maybe, or start off straight away with the film because I know it's really good to watch it. Now, all four artists work in the contemporary music field, compose, create art, um, sculpt out of sound. It, it's wonderful. So I just want to say what a privilege it is to have four women artists on the screen in Kirklees on a Friday night when we can't go out. So we're going out but staying in. So, Joe, do you want me to get your film up or do you want to... Let's watch the film. Um, okay. Shall I say a little bit about it? Yeah, so, that's wonderful. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, this summer that's just been, 2020, um, I was asked by a local arts organisation, AME, to um, do an artist in residence. Um, and I decided uh, for that, to explore um, our relationship with the River Colne, which is the river that runs through Huddersfield. It starts in Marsden up on the moors and it runs through down to Colnebridge, passes Huddersfield on the way. And I walked down the River Colne, taking field recordings and video footage. And I had a little exhibition in Dye Hall in the summer in uh actually no it wasn't the summer it was october um just before everything locked down we managed to have an exhibition and as part of that exhibition i showed a couple of audio visual pieces that i'd made which had been, had been inspired by my journey down the river and um the whole exhibition i guess was itself inspired by something that um i'd read about a river in New Zealand, uh, Waganui River, where the Maori people um, have worked with the local legislators to um, give the river the same rights as a human being. So they're very, very connected with their river and they, they see it as another living human being. And that kind of sparked my thinking about well, what's the relationship with that we have with our rivers. And of course, it's really um, kind of impossible to think that we'd bet we in the in England would ever be as connected to um, a river to, to want to give it the same rights as a human being but nevertheless we do have some kind of relationship with it so this the, my walk down the river was I was mulling all these things over in my head but one of the things that um, struck me as I walked down the river was the number of um, combined sewer overflows that we have on the river so these are kind of uh, release points on the sewerage network and when it rains heavily and the sewers fill up um, the excess dilute sewage is discharged into the rivers so it doesn't um, back up into people's homes or flood the sewage works and um, this piece is called waste and it's inspired by the sewerage, <laughs> the sewerage network i know that's kind of a weird thing um <laughs> <laughs> for a piece of sound art to be inspired by, but I have a kind of environmental background, so the environmentalism has come in and um, it's resulted in this piece called Waste. It's about That's six wonderful. minutes six minutes long. Yeah, fantastic. We'll get that up in one second. I just wanted to mention that you said about Die Hall that you had the exhibition and yeah. it might be worth mentioning that that's on the piazza in Huddersfield is that where you it was shown right. yeah yeah because um, yeah. Ryoko who's going to be appearing a bit later who's going to be on screen a bit later um, is very much uh, the curator there isn't she and 
she'll be able to talk a bit more about that. Yeah. I'll get the film up for you now, Joe. But thank you for explaining that because I had had a sneak preview of your film and I, I had a slight inkling what it might be about, but I didn't know 100%. Yeah. So that's wonderful to yeah. know. Right, I'll start the video share. If you just bear with me one second, I'll just get it up. So there we go. Uh, let's just try and make a smaller. Ooh, won't be a minute. Okay. This is a new. Oh, that's it. <coughs> Jude. Yeah. You don't I'm seem to have any visuals. No, I'm gonna go back in. Sorry, I've sorry. No, it's a different way of bringing it up on the screen and I don't know why it's not. Just bear with me one second. I'm just gonna take it back off. And then add again. I'll just move it along and just double check. There we go. Sorry, there we go. We can start there. Joe, should the visuals have started yet? <clears throat> uh, yes, they should, yeah. Oh, I've no idea then. Just bear with me one second. If people want to just um, talk amongst themselves for one second and I'll try and get this tech sorted out. There won't be a second. It's not happy. Maybe maybe uh, we leave it, Jude, and people can. There we go. No, I don't think it's playing ball at all. Sorry about that, Joe. Okay. We can, try a, we can try a little bit later and I'll see if it'll come up a bit later. It's just a slightly different way of not um of yeah, of adding it through, but it obviously wasn't as successful as it should have been. So I do apologize for that. So you said that people can watch it at another place. Can they go onto your website to be able to watch uh, it? Oh yeah. Yeah, watch up my website if you like. Um, okay, so cool. It's, it, it's made with a um, combination of sounds that I collected on the on my walk down the river, um, including uh, using normal microphones, but also contact microphones, um, which pick up the vibrations from objects. So um, there's some sewer pipes which I can't uh, attach the contact mics to. 
um, to collect sounds from banging the pipes. And also hydrophones, which are small, um, they're like contact mics, but they're waterproof. So you can put them in the water and um, record sounds from underwater. And some of the early, early sounds that you did manage to hear there were the hydrophone sounds. Um, okay. I'm just going to give it one more go and see if it'll... Um... Third time lucky. Yeah. Oh. It's coming directly from the desktop, so there shouldn't be a problem. Let me... So we've got the sound. No. Oh. The image, the imagery seems to be it's stuck. Stuck, yeah. yeah maybe, maybe it's the bandwidth or something. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's very strange. I've tried it like loads of times, and it worked fine. So we'll just see what happens now. The video is moving, but it's moving very, very slowly. Okay. Shall we just suggest people watch it somewhere else? <laughs> so it might, might be a more enjoyable Sorry experience. about that. It has been tried, <laughs> but it might be because there's so many people in the studio. So I just tried it on my own before, So um, and it was fine. But now mm. I've kind of got stuck. That's bad. Yeah, so it might be that it's a bit of an overload. So I do apologize to everybody, but you will be able to see it on Joe's website. Somebody's put technology, and I'm like, yes, that's true, with a sad face. Thank you, Alex Thompson. You're remaining very <laughs> calm under the circumstances. <laughs> <laughs> so, Joe. You had a walk along the col and you took some sound recording, you put some microphones, I heard that bit, under water and in logs and in pipes and things? Or Yeah, ambient recordings, recordings of, of uh, the river and the wildlife and banging on pipes and along railings and um, just poking about really, seeing what was going on, trying wow. to kind of trying to kind of get the essence of the place because all the time I was walk walking down the river which was lovely it was um in in it's the spring mm -hmm. and it was locked down so it was relatively qu quiet which it, uh. which makes it great for field recording because things like airplanes and cars which can often mar your field recordings were non-existent or at much reduced levels and the it, sun was shining so it was a bit of a magical experience, really. But what I was really trying to do on my walk down the river, like I said, was to kind of um, understand the essence of the river or and how people related to it and okay. then collect material that I could then go away and work with to produce um, some art for the, for the exhibition in October. So I ended okay. up um, making that audiovisual piece that you've just uh attempted attempted yes yeah, so sorry but you know uh, people all have a treat when they do get to see it because i've uh, i've had a look at it so yeah yeah so that was that was inspired by the sewerage network uh, there's another piece <laughs> called wall which is inspired by uh the way the river's been covered over and walled in various places and i managed okay. to crawl under a mill in um millsbridge and take some footage from under the mill wow. and and that piece was about the spirit of the river and how it felt to be um, covered over. Um, so close to it, I suppose, as well. Yeah. Really and then, uh, so say that again. Just enclosed and um, 
I know if I think about the Granary Wharf when you're, you're sort of in the tunnels in Leeds and yeah. this river thundering by, it's a very different experience, isn't it? Having yeah, that. very little light and yeah. lots of lots of spiders on the ceiling. So whilst it may not be good for birds or fish, it was an excellent habitat for spiders. Wow. wow. Um, Gosh. And then I then I drew the river on, I painted the river on the wall actually in the exit. I was able allowed on this nice exhibition wall brilliant white to yeah, yeah. go there with a blue paintbrush and um paint on the the course of the river on the wall which i then annotated but this this, this lovely blue wiggle appeared wow. on the wall and and i kind of looked at it and thought that's such a nice that's such a nice wiggle it's such a nice <laughs> organic shape and i could never have come up with that but oh, the river's so kind of the river's yeah. kind of made that shape, um, and here I am just replicating it onto the wall. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but wow. I have to say myself, well, after I draw, after I painted it on with the help of others, I thought, God, that looks quite arty. Oh, fantastic! And, um, <laughs> wow. Yeah. So. And have you got some recording of that? I'm sorry, I might bring us all back into the thing while we're chatting. Do you have some recording of that? As in, did you take photographs of the? the blue wiggle and the river that you've done i do have a little bit of video <laughs> somewhere but something else that um someone else did after the exhibition stephen harvey who works at ame um i sent him lots of my material from the exhibition um so photographs video video footage sounds some of the some of the notes that i'd made that i'd stuck on the annotated river i then I then recorded okay. um, as, as narr narr narrative kind of voice. And I sent all of this material to him and he made this amazing little film, um, which oh, wow. is up on YouTube called I Am On My Way To The Sea, which was the title of the exhibition. Um, oh, it was nice. a compilation of the video and audio footage and my narrations. And I felt it really kind of captured the the, the spirit of the exhibition actually and and the experience of walking down the river i was having all these very different and varied thoughts going through my head about things like sewage and <laughs> wet wipes that you think so about that all the time so many wet wipes in the river if you if you <laughs> not put your wet wipes down the toilet that's my environmental yeah, message for today they because do. they can end up in the river but lots of other things as well like the wildlife yeah. the liminal space and how that frees yeah. your mind up and many many different types of people using the river and yeah, and yeah. and being all told off things. trespassing um wow. so all these kind of varied things were going on and they, he's captured that really nicely in the film i think so where can people see that joe did you say That's, on youtube I'm yeah. on the way to the river i am on my way to on the, the way sea. to the sea it's also on my I've, it's on my website as well oh, under the so sound people can check it. yeah oh, wonderful actually. great stuff Cool. Well, thank you. I, we're, we've moved through time quite quickly. Yeah. There. I'm going to invite, oh, I'm just going to close my eyes. I think I'm just going to invite Andy to come up next, if that's okay. Well, come up next. It's like I've got a stage set up for people to step up onto. I'm sorry, I don't have that. But if Andy wants to just like introduce yourself, maybe talk a little bit about your practice if you want, Andy. And yeah, I'll sure. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Um, questions and things. I'll just get that up and I'll just okay. move you into. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, so competent tonight. It's unbelievable, isn't it? How it's fine. It's relaxed. It's Friday night. I am. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, oh, just briefly. Um, my name is Andy Brown, obviously. Um, I am. Uh, I, 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 don't, I never know what to call myself. Uh, I don't know if I'm a musician, an artist, a sound artist, um, but basically I make sound. Um, and I've been doing that for a very long time. I started playing um, bass, bass guitar. I have actually behind me, there, there are some bass guitars and oh, wow. double bass, although I don't play the double bass very well. But that's how I started a very long time ago when I was about 16. Um, and then, yeah, more recently I, I started to, I don't play bass anymore, but I started to work with glass. So behind me, you can see a sound installation. I've been working with glass, I don't know, since about 2009, eight, eight, seven, I can't remember, but, 
Um, I started working with glass because I heard a really beautiful glass instrument uh, called the glass harmonica, which was invented by Benjamin Franklin in the 1700s and um, just wow. fell in love with sound. But because uh, they're either very rare or if they are made now, they're very expensive, I couldn't afford to buy one. So I started experimenting with wine glasses um, and you can't see, but over in the corner, there's a cabinet over there, which is just full of things that I've been collecting for years, mainly from charity shops. But um, yeah, I started working with much larger glasses. So the glass behind me, a part of the sound installation, are very big. But I have got one, this is this is probably my biggest glass. It's, it's huge. And it makes a great sound. Sorry, it's really dusty. I didn't realise that when wow. I was Could but you yeah. make that sound again, Andy? Could you just Yeah, make... I, do, I do have, uh, no, I haven't got one in from me. I don't know how we it's they're really resonant that's why i work with the those kind of size of glasses um and then yes i started to make music with those probably in 2007 eight or nine as i said i can't remember uh and then i i embarked on a undergraduate course in 2016 and i started to make sound installation um, which is what I've been doing since, sorry, that was 2012, I finished in 2016. Uh, and uh, I moved to Huddersfield, as you can probably tell from my accent, I am not from here. <laughs> no. uh, I'm, I'm from London. Uh, and uh, I moved up here in 2017, I think, to start a master's, uh, which turned into a PhD, which I'm still doing. Wow. And um the installation behind me, mainly I make sound installations now, and the installation behind me is something that I was also commissioned to do um, as artist in residence at AME, invited by Ryoko and Stephen um, after Joe. Um, unfortunately, because of lockdown, I wasn't able to exhibit oh. that. So I filmed it, and Stephen worked his magic with my terrible shoddy camera work and made a beautiful film, which is very lucky uh, to have. And uh, yeah, that's basically what I do. So I use glass, different, it's not always wine glass shapes, I do use other types of glass, um, but they are mainly ready-made glass objects. That's and do you put things that, because I think I've seen some of the oh, performance that you did, and you did you have some water in the glass and stuff? Yeah, some of the ones yeah. behind me are tuned, basically yeah. to, to change the pitch, you can tune them with water. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Wow. I used to perform a lot. Um, I haven't. The last performance I did was in 2018. I just don't really enjoy performing. And as no. soon as I started making sound installation, it just felt a lot more natural to me. Um, and then so, we yeah. come and join us on screen, and then yeah, come yeah, and bring you out of your comfort zone. Like well, that, that's oh, different. So that's yeah, a bit okay. different, but yeah, yeah it's uh, yeah. So it's it's mainly the sound installation, but I do put things inside them sometimes. Um, in fact, hang on one second. Over here, I have a very dusty glass bowl, which is full of uh, terrible things. Um, these nano box, basically, which are like little. Um, toys which vibrate um I so i basically i mean they move around you can't hear it here oh. again that's really dusty um but yeah i use a lot of contact microphones joe was talking about contact microphones yes. and i use contact microphones basically to amplify the glass um there are lots of contact microphones underneath each glass there um and yeah so i put coins and springs and these and all kinds of things in the glass basically wow. to make make them resonate um Gosh. so yeah to get different sounds so you can play sort of a group of them into sorry i'm talking because i, I have no idea how you will create the beautiful sounds that you do out of the the glass but i guess well I yeah it's objects, it changes the note and it's tone and sure i mean it's not i do when i perform live i play them by hand so i just rub the rim of the glass and that makes them vibrate um but with the sound installations you can probably just about see behind me there are some little white discs and those are actually speakers so i send a tone at the resonant frequency of the glass which makes it vibrate at its fundamental frequency 
when that vibrates and then send that signal into a contact microphone underneath it um, and that okay. amplifies it and sends it into a computer. I use a software called Maximus P um, and from there I can control it, change the pitch, add lots of wow. reverb, which I tend to do far too much. And yeah, and really kind of uh, mess around with the with the with the sound of it. So that's how I do it. So th this is actually an automated glass harp. So I don't have to play it anymore. I just have to program it. Um, yeah, luckily, yeah. I have some friends who are much better at programming than my, than I am who help who've helped me a lot with that. Um, but wow. yeah, so that's what Fantastic. I do. What it sounds like as well, I'll just bring everybody back in, I'm hoping, when I click this button. Um, what it sounds like from both of both you and Joe is that collaborative angle as well about Ame obviously offering a space for exhibiting, working with you, other people helping you create records or films of, of the work you do. It sounds really great to be able to collaborate with other people, you know, using your music or sound and then working further with other people if i'm correct does that sound sort yeah, of correct? no i i think it's a really um because it can be quite a quite a kind of insular experience being a freelance artist yeah so you know when there's opportunities to collaborate um that's I I really enjoy that, and there's a kind of kind of synergy that happens when you don't really know what's going to come out the other end when you combine your kind of ideas and creativity with someone else's. Yeah, exciting yeah. things can happen, and and it's also the um, it's just a way to stay connected and feel like you're part of a creative. Um, community and that's yeah, really yeah. important I yeah, think yeah. in terms of keeping you going yeah yeah absolutely. definitely definitely I mean from my point of view I moved my entire life from London uh, where I'd lived all pretty much all my life um, but I already had met Ryoko at a sound art festival uh, in Barrow and Furness called Full of Noises um, and I'd met Eleanor um, we knew each other um a little so it was really I don't think we'd met Joe maybe we hadn't I don't think so but you know like it's for me it's really important moving here and and connecting with other people connecting with other artists and you know and also having you know Ryoko and Stephen have given opportunities for exhibition um locally which is absolutely fantastic so yeah it's really yeah. important to be connected to other people in that way yeah and I guess if you're um, wanting to take take some steps into um, the the sort of music world, or maybe studying it, or just thinking about creating some sound art, then a great way to do it is to find out what's happening locally by going maybe having a look on the websites and things, and just taking yourself along when we're out of lockdown, or mm -hmm. just you know taking yourself along to things and just chatting to people. I suppose, isn't it? It's part of yeah. just building up an understanding and things. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to jump across because I'm conscious that it's just yeah, past half really past. So I'm just going to jump across to Eleanor and bring Eleanor up, and. Um, and I've left Ryoko to the end because I want Ryoko to talk a bit about me as well, possibly. And I know, Joe, you were going to mention as well about the work that you were doing with the young people that you were. Do you want to quickly mention that before? Yeah, I was just going to plug. Eleanor. Sorry, Eleanor. I'm just going to plug a course that starts on the 10th of March, Wednesday evenings, um, six weeks. It's called Sound Adventures. It's a. Uh, uh, course has been funded by Yorkshire Sound Women Network and Lawrence Batley Fantastic. Theatre oh, and it, cool. it's for 11 to 16 year old girls and non-binary people and we're yeah. going to be lots, doing lots of exciting things with sound we're going to be uh, taking field recordings using digital audio workstations and making yeah. geolocated sound walks and it's going to be okay. fun and there's still some places left so if you're interested in sound or you know someone, a young person who's interested in sound and music technology and wants to take part, then please let them know. It's totally free. And just go to the Yorkshire Women's Sound Yorkshire Network. Sound, Yorkshire Sound Women Network. Uh, sound, 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 sound Adventure. Sound. Yeah, course. brilliant. Yeah. Lovely. Thanks. Fantastic. Right. Hi, Eleanor. Let's just move things around. See you on oh, <laughs> one day. 
I'm just getting everybody in the spotlight a little bit more than they want to be. Um, I'll just get your website up as well. Hi. Hi, Eleanor. Hi. Um, yeah, so I'm Eleanor Cully. I'm an artist, composer, performer. Um, I'm now based in Newcastle. I've just moved up here um, in January. So, um, but yeah, I, before that, I spent seven years in Huddersfield um, making work and yeah um my work mainly kind of deals with i suppose small fragments of material sometimes found material um i draw on a lot of vocal music um folk songs or or choral pieces and often take fragments you know a few words or a couple of notes from pieces um and embed them really into into sound art practice i i do a lot of recording um with just a small zoom recorder at home i record different rooms sometimes or small spaces um like the insides of seashells i'm really interested in and i've been recording the insides of seashells for a few years now and in fact i'm going to be um drawing on this practice in a in an upcoming workshop for unfinished business on the 8th of March while we're plugging other events, so I might as well talk about it now. Um, and that's going to be at 11 a.m. in the morning. It's a kind of meet and listen workshop. So I'll be um, discussing my practice and playing some examples of pieces. And we'll also talk about that practice and, and how to go about listening to small spaces and thinking about sound. Um, and that's, I think, primarily for 15 to 25 yeah it can be I think it can be any age but we just yeah. did put it out to younger people as well because we thought it might be something fun while you were in lockdown that they might be able to yeah. have a go at schools are reopening and stuff but yeah it was quite a nice idea to um, just a little bit of a way to step into the field of creating sound art or just listening and thinking what yeah. noise or what could I do with that so yeah that's going to be streamed live on the Kirklees Libraries platforms and we've got our young apprentice Hannah joining us on that as well so there'll be lots of time for question and answers as well I think brilliant so um have you exhibited with Ame at all have you done any work with Ame the space in Huddersfield that people are talking about yeah, um, Die Hall is, is a great space and actually um, just before just before lockdown um, I did have a piece called Clear that um, that was exhibited there. The exhibition was curated by my partner George Berenger and um, he'd been working with Ryoko at AME for a, well not at AME, at the space for a little while um, and that exhibition was really good and unfortunately had to close down um, necessarily of course oh, but because, because of lockdown yeah. a few days after it opened so um, and actually out of I was really grateful for that opportunity because um, out of that I started to um, make albums basically over the lockdown months I decided to oh, release wow. that piece that had been uh, installed because I, I was kind of up on the ceiling with a with a ladder and cables trying to kind of embed the speakers <laughs> into this into the ceiling and in the end they were um, placed near the windows at the front of the space so um, if you don't and know the space it's the piazza, a big yeah. glass wall sorry that's on the piazza yeah the yeah piazza Hudson, piazza yeah so it's a it's a lovely um quite a big main space and one of the walls is is glass and um you know there's there's been a couple of window exhibitions i think have, haven't there in yeah. just in the glass space yeah. and so i installed the speakers kind of tucked away in the corner so that um the piece which has a lot of kind of traffic noise and a little bit of bird song. Um, it's mainly my voice, iterations of my voice through um, a recording, but it's very ambient. And so it worked really well with the yeah. windows. Um, so that when you were looking at the visual art in the exhibition, the sound would sort of pass you by. Um, but yeah, and so I decided to release it. Um, I started a Bandcamp page 
my first one and just put a couple of well, I had to chop up the recording which it is a 70 minute recording actually I had to chop God. it up into two small sections because Bandcamp when you make your first album doesn't let you um, upload a big file oh, so okay. that's the reason I had to do that which is a bit sad now because I've got a couple of albums and so if I did it now I'd be able to put the whole thing online but oh. anyway I ended up just showing a little bit of that piece um, so the other half oh. of it is still on my computer which is kind of nice to only put a little bit a little section of the piece yeah, into yeah. the world but um yeah and and sen so during lockdown I started working with the recordings at home and thinking about ways of collaborating with people so the next album I made was um a an album called Cuckoo and I embedded parts of my voice into recordings of different people's rooms that they sent me so um yeah and then from there I've been continuing this kind of work. Wow so again it's quite a lot of collaboration and coming together with other people and being part of yeah. communities and networks and things like that I guess and um and how easy it is it do you think if somebody was interested in let me just move the banner somebody was interested in sort of starting to think about I'd like to have a go at this is it just sort of is it thinking about studying somewhere or just starting to play around with objects things at home listening to different types of music I'm just thinking about anybody watching who might think well I quite fancy having a go at beginning to think about sound and 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 um, sound art and things like that I mean I, I think sorry to jump in but I think um you know, I always go back. Yes, yes, I have. I have now got a degree in music technology. Yes, I am doing a PhD. But there were very many years that I was creating work before I embarked on study, and I made my first solo recorded work with a fifteen-pound condenser microphone from Maplin, which sadly no longer exists. No. <laughs> um, and a free free software called Audacity. Um, and I think you know, if somebody wants to make make music or make work there are ways to do that which are not expensive and you don't need much technical know-how and I think it's just important to just do it and have fun basically yeah. yeah and also there's so much advice available on YouTube now yes if, if you want to learn how to use audacity if you want to know what EQ yeah. is or compression or how to use reverb or just go on YouTube and okay you might find some dud sites but eventually you'll find some find somebody who's some good. sites that offer like really you know good advice and I, I sometimes think you could do a music technology degree on YouTube now if you had yeah. someone curated <laughs> if someone curated the right sites for you to look at the type of yeah. stuff that you learn in a music technology degree a lot of that is freely available now yeah it's wow. online it's incredible isn't it so people can start to have a go themselves like maybe i know if, um, ellen is going to talk about some of the sounds around the house it's listening to when you're walking around the space just listening to different sounds when you're going for your week, daily lockdown walk maybe just be aware of sounds that are coming i i was suddenly aware that my boots are really loud so my steps when i make the steps you know they're quite loud and it's quite a nice rhythm sometimes it's really fast sometimes it's really slow and then if i go on tiptoes i know it's not about me this but if i go on tiptoes it's a completely different sound so yeah, it's as simple as that sometimes isn't it thinking about yeah that's lovely and sometimes beginning sometimes you you want to embrace those things and in, include footsteps and include the sounds of um of how you move through a landscape with your recordings as well and not just kind of focus on it being pristine or using really good quality microphones sometimes those homemade um and more lo-fi elements are really inherent in in the um the pieces so it's definitely a case of just listening and exploring and and then making decisions based on hearing back maybe what you've recorded if you're working yeah. with recording um yeah because if you've got your so. mobile phone when you're out and about mm -hmm. if you're fortunate enough to have a phone um 
you can just do your recording and stuff on that, can't you? And yep. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah. And I'm just really conscious that we've talked about Die Hall and things about Ryoko a lot, and we haven't even brought Ryoko on the screen, so I'm just <laughs> going to bring Ryoko up and uh, really quickly. And we've still got plenty of time. We've still got 15 minutes, and I only need a couple of minutes at the end. So um, let me just get Ryoko's banner up, and I'll right, see whether I manage to get you as a big nope it's Eleanor this time <laughs> <laughs> yay so let's just get your details up Ryoko as well okay. brilliant there we go hi Ryoko hi so I'm Ryoko Akama um I work with sound and materials um Daily tools, waste, scraps, rubbish, litters. I collect everything and um, compose them into a sculpture or performance or or composition. Um, because I'm cross-cultural, I'm half Korean and half Japanese, and I've been living in England for nearly 20 years. I'm very interested in this sort of cross-cultural thinkings and perceptions and environments and, and, and structures and patterns and architectures and all of these things experienced in a space. Mm -hmm. um, can I try to share the screen? Yep, <laughs> fingers crossed. Uh, well. You've done this before. I think this is gonna work. Yeah, it worked fine earlier, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, it did. Right, let's get up. It won't be a second. Are we ready to bring it up on screen? Yeah. So if I hope everyone can hear it. So my my performance is all about um, lights, kinetic um, contraptions. I try not to program anything, so everything happens because of the effect and the cause, and um, everything is sort of what I've collected in my life, daily life. Um, and that goes the same to the installation that I try to see. There's always a theme behind it, but the viewers don't have to see my theme. Mm -hmm. They, I want them to understand what they feel and what they see. Um, so, um, I do have a message or some sort of like concept behind it, but uh -huh. it's always the subject is always a matter of how they take it. So um, this was done last, not last year, two years ago. Anyway, so it's all on my website, um, yeah. which is ryokakama.com. Um, during the pandemic, um, I decided to use as much social media as possible, which I had never done. And um, so um, I was involved with a thing called a Sculpture Day, which was run by Yorkshire Sculpture International. So I was making a lot of sculptures in-house without being able to go to my studio. So. The limit was really like, you know, everything was limited. So I had to find everything from where I was, which was a house. So I was doing that for four years. And you can see kind of reflection of how I work with objects. And even though when I say I work with a sound, most often my sound is the smallest, even if I go to visual artist exhibition. So it's quite interesting that even though I hear a lot of things, that um, the outcome of my work, even though I work with the sound, tend to be always the smallest. And um, yeah. And then recently, uh, the sculpture day kind of faded away as a project because things were going back to normal. And um, I've created a project and I try to post something every day and um, I have something in my mind but I don't want to talk about it yet but that's oh that's okay project. it's always good to know that things are coming yeah. up we can follow you and find that's out that's my own project yeah so that's kind of yeah coming out lots of things yeah wow these images are amazing so people can find this on Instagram yeah 
Fantastic. Like this. Yeah. I really like this one, but anyway. Wow. And there's a sound. So I work with a sound. That's that's how it goes. Wow. So because I've got five minutes. This is <laughs> Ame. <laughs> yeah. Um Wonderful. I say I'm an artistic director, but I I I try to see it as I mean, as an artist collective, sort of artist run organization. Uh, we have two galleries in Huddersfield. One is called the Die Hall, where everyone has talked about. And then there's another hall which is Show Hall. Um, in Japanese, it just is translated as big hall and small hall. And this is, um, it's on the website. There's Andy there, there's Joe there. So you can see we've been doing a lot of, lot of things. Unfortunately, after the pandemic, um, we had to change the way of thinking. And um, at this moment, we are kind of moving on to an online projects and, and you know, programs yeah. and so on. Mm -hmm. So um, it's quite emotional to think back about what we've done so far. And um, we are still a very, very small organization in comparison with other galleries and, and venues. So the funding is very limited, but um, I hope that we can continue to do something in the space um, when yeah. when summer comes. Um, and, um, because you've invited artists from all over the world, haven't you? To yeah. Come and mm. take residence or or have concerts, etc. Yeah, yeah. So I we we try to kind of bring the global um, collaborations and programs into Huddersfield in okay. where there's so many sort of local and community-based thinking organizations. But um, I think the balance between that is very important that to think about, you know, the world is out there and think about that life is here so I think Ame is there because we want to kind of balance that out. Yeah. That both are really important to yeah. realize what we are. Yeah. Have things locally and within the community while still thinking about the bigger picture around different cultures, different countries. Yeah. Um, and how we all kind of, we are such a big global network, aren't we? Um, mm, influencing yeah. each other and social media, et cetera, et cetera. Wonderful. Because otherwise, musicians just go to big cities in England, Manchester, London, Birmingham, and yeah, um, yeah. the people in Huddersfield want to go and see them in the big cities. But we wanted it to be the other way around, that something is happening in a smaller town in Huddersfield. Yeah, so yeah. People from big cities would come and visit Huddersfield. It's been difficult, yeah, but, yeah. you know, that's yeah. what we've been trying to do. Yeah, and you've been faced by things that nobody could have predicted, haven't you, with, um, with the pandemic? And yeah, it's amazing. I mean, we we have the Contemporary Music Festival, don't we, which is international. I mean, it's got such renown. It's lovely that you're, you know, there's lots of things that are growing within Kirklees, bigger and bigger and including more and more people to just get that vibrancy, that community and those collaborations that we've talked about, which is, yeah, wonderful because we all learn off each other, don't we? And yeah, it's really, it's great. I think it's a lovely space. I think, yeah, I think it's great to have that in the heart of Huddersfield. But I know this thing's happened throughout Kirklees as well. So that music website is a really good one to check out different venues and different things there. Um, I'm just thinking about what time it is. It's 54. It's, uh, we've just had a couple of comments about high and about lockdown, kind of um, tripping people up, et cetera, et cetera. But um, I'm just thinking about time-wise. Is there anything that anybody particularly wants to bring up or mention or while well, we've just got a minute or two left and then I'll just do the sort of conclusion and chat about um, what's coming up next. 
has anybody yeah i guess we're in such a weird position aren't we it's not like you can shout out about things that you, you can come along to see and things like that i guess a lot of it's i would say the other, the other really good thing about ryoko's space and organization is the opportunity that gives for emerging artists absolutely yeah um and because i i'm i suppose i previously worked in the environmental sector re Went, went into creative music technology, came out the other end wanting to be a freelance creative person. And that yeah, yeah. there's a hump to get over before you can actually make a living. And and unless there's people giving you, as an emerging artist with a very, very small portfolio yeah, yeah. Um, from your degree maybe, unless there's people encouraging you and giving you opportunities, you're quite likely to go back and get a mainstream job and not mm -hmm. really because you have to. So mm -hmm. organisations like Ryoko's are really important, I think, to help people. Yeah. Um, that was a strange word, emerging. But people at the beginning of their creative people at the practice, beginning, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or people who are just taking steps into a world of exhibiting or showing yeah, or they need, a, they need a bit of help and a bit of um, encouragement, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, it's too easy just to think, oh, this is too hard. And I just keep getting rejected. I'm just going to go and get a nine to five job again with a salary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it is also like finding out where your community is, isn't it? Within mm -hmm. where maybe where you live or somewhere easy to get to when we're not in lockdown, obviously. And I'm um, just building up those sort of networks, those relationships, I suppose, by talking to people and finding out what's going on. And does that suit me or does that suit me? As, you know, my practice and things. So I could talk for hours and listen for hours, I should say. I don't mean talk. I could talk for hours. I could listen for ages because I feel like we've only just like got a tiny little insight into what you all do because I know your practice is, you know, wide and big and it's really inspiring to just hear that snippet of what you do and what's going on locally. But also, as I was saying earlier, you know, it's you – Put things out there much wider than local it's you know you you've all been international performing doing all sorts of exhibitions um i've just had a comment say that was interesting thanks and look forward to live events in huddersfield and a great space thumbs up <laughs> we've got a guest for um, for ryoko space um so i don't overrun too much i just want to say thank you <laughs> all so much for coming to something that we weren't quite sure what would happen that whether we'd yeah and it i think it's been just such a, a a pleasure to hear about your individual practice and to hear about how you're sort of all connected i know you've all got connections to huddersfield and kirkley's which is lovely and that you perform and create within the set and, and obviously the social media and your websites, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm just going to say it was, yeah, I think I've said inspiring quite a lot of times. I'll probably get told <laughs> off for saying the same words too many times, but it really is. It's lovely. There's such a breadth of, of, of practice with so many commonalities in the fact of sound and listening and having a go and let's just see. So, um, I've just got to bring a little bit up about the library, <laughs> which obviously I love. So um, if you do like music and you're interested in music, we've got lots of books on Overdrive. We've got lots of books. This is the Overdrive. And we've got e-books, so not just paper books, obviously, because we're shy at the moment. But we've got e-books and we've got loads about um, different female musicians and we have hopefully a few about composers. We're building up a curator collection as well for an event that we're doing on Monday the 8th. So you'll find some music things in there. We also have some, we have what we call Press Reader. And if you're a member of the library, you can go on to Press Reader for free. So just kirkleyslibraries.co.uk forward slash online resources. You just need your library card number. It tells you what to do. And you can access music magazines. Um, 
there were some about making music with technology. There was some about um, classical music. So it's definitely worth having a look if you want to just find a bit more information about different types of music. And um, they're just regular journals that you can get for free. You can read them and yeah, and you can, I think you can even translate some of the other language ones as well. So we've got another event, as we were saying earlier, and that is going to be on Monday, the 8th of March. And it's called Meet, Make and Listen with sound artist Eleanor Cully, who you all know now because she's been talking about our practice. And we're celebrating International Women's Day uh, alongside it being a part of the program for Living Knowledge Network with the British Library. So we're celebrating International Women's Day, which is on the 8th of March, and it's going to be a mix of music, workshop and sound with question and answers as well. The information about that will be coming soon, but it'll be a, an event streamed live from 11 to 12, Monday the 8th, and it'll be on Twitter, Facebook and YouTube on the usual Kirklees Libraries channels and you'll be able to send in questions and answers to us as well. So I think we've just literally hit eight o'clock. So we haven't had loads of time for conversation. I'm not sure, I mean, it'd be lovely if we could invite people back to have an actual kind of proper conversation. It might be that we're able to do something in buildings at some time later on in the year fingers crossed and so maybe we'll be able to have a bit more about the music and about conversations about making music well, we've got a message from Stephen Harvey well done everyone very interesting <laughs> <laughs> I think Stephen might be yes I think Ryoko might know Stephen that's lovely we all so, do <laughs> yeah you all do fantastic we all Thank do you, hi Stephen, Stephen. <laughs> big shout out to Hello. Stephen Shout out to Alex, who said Alex Thompson said hi as well. And he was very sympathetic. Hi. Is it he, Alex? I'm presuming, making the wrong assumption, maybe, but technology with a, a sad face and somebody else commenting about lockdown. So I think all it is is to say thank you so much for coming tonight and being part of this. It's wonderful for libraries to be able to invite musicians artists into the community and have a chat with people online people can access it for free it gives people a taste of what's going on in Kirklees which is wonderful so I think it's just a matter of saying bye and then I better press that red button to end the broadcast <laughs> and yeah <laughs> bye. bye bye thank you bye.